Okay, okay, everyone's like, flip the clamp, flip the clamp, sweep the leg. I certainly don't want to come across as unappreciative. I'm more than happy to oblige. But come on, a little credit here. I don't think flipping this clamp's gonna make that big of a difference. Well, I'll be damned. So with your help, I found the problem, at least a big part of the problem. The scope wasn't fried, my clamp isn't toast. It's not a tuma. It was a short circuit in my setup, right smack between my ears. I was in fact in the wrong current range for the clamp. And yes, I feel like an idiot. In my defense though, I never read the manual. I don't think I've ever used this clamp with anything more than three, maybe four amps tops. Even that sounds like a lot. I just assumed a 65 amp clamp was a 65 amp clamp. And I was in the one millivolt per 10 milliamp range because I wanted more resolution on the scope. At one millivolt per 100 milliamps, if this thing maxes out at 65 amps, well, I can't see as much on the display. My setup is also a little bit different. Being a good scientist, I changed a lot of things at once. Now the current path is no longer through the bench. It's going through that 3 8 cinch rod there. Ground clamp is on one end and I've got tungsten pushed into the other end. So I've got the arc jumping between two points instead of going between the point on the torch and the flat of the workbench. No clue if that actually makes any difference, but there were some really interesting comments in the last video about having inadvertently created some sort of a diode setup, something that may have given preference to current flow in one direction as opposed to the other direction. And my scope is also up off the bench on some genuine IKEA RF attenuators. The waveform still isn't exactly what I was expecting. I mean, I wasn't expecting a text book square wave, of course, but getting into why it now looks the way it does is frankly above my pay grade. I wasn't trying to diagnose anything. The HTP is brand new and doing great. I was hoping to use the scope to help illustrate what these adjustments do on a technical level. It was pure tomfoolery, arguably quite pointless, but nothing more than having some fun. So I was going to leave it at that. Man up to being an idiot, wasting everybody's time, and scamper off with my tail between my legs. But since all this junk is out, let's take the opportunity to make some changes on the welder and see what happens on the scope. Now bear with me a moment, this is just some housekeeping. The welder was set to 40 amps, but when I light up it drops a little, so I'm just bumping it back up to 40. Doesn't really matter, of course, it's just my OCD. Notice that the waveform is both symmetric and balanced. Symmetric meaning it's the same 40 amps on the top that it is on the bottom. And balance is 50%. Pulse width on the top is the same as pulse width on the bottom. Let's first change the frequency. It goes as you'd expect. You can see and hear the waveform change. I'll leave it at 80 hertz for absolutely no good reason at all. Next, I'll change the AC balance. You can see I have control over how much of that waveform stays in electrode positive versus electrode negative. I do apologize though, apparently my clamp is on quote unquote backwards since increasing the balance on this machine should increase the electrode negative. Basically we're seeing an upside down waveform because the way my current clamp is taking this measurement. I'll go back to 50% balance and we'll see the waveform follow suit. Same amount of cleaning action now in this waveform as penetration. 50% means positive and negative are balanced. And finally, the holy grail of what I was after, symmetry control. The HDP adjusts symmetry independently, so you'll first see EN dash or EN negative show up on the menu for electrode negative. Again, my clamp is the wrong way around, so you're about to see the top of the waveform come down instead of the bottom come up. I just can't seem to do anything right. Now, I'm not sure why those leading and trailing peaks aren't coming down but you can see the mean current level on the top is being independently controlled. The current level on the bottom is still 40 amps, and I'm adjusting the top side, dropping the amperage. If I toggle over to the electrode positive half, you'll see ENP appear on the display, which now gives me control over the other half. In this case, the HTP221 allows me to adjust from 10% to 90% of the machine set current. And finally, one last shot, have a look at my electrodes. Just that small amount of time pushing a heavy electrode positive current, and at 40 amps no less, my very sharp tungstens have balled up. Anyway, that's all I got. Sorry again for the roller coaster ride, and thanks for watching.